everybody, uh, Matt from Nerd Knights Penny here. Coming at you with episode 10 of our Bloodborne series. We're going to be painting the church giants. We're going to try and expedite this as quickly as I can. I know the video seems a little long, but it's not that long. It just takes forever because you're painting four giant miniatures. But we're going to try and expedite it. Um, so, yeah. Hey, if this is your first time with the channel and you like what you see and you want to paint the rest of the Bloodborne miniatures and need some ideas or maybe just, I don't know, you like watching these videos, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button and hit that bell button. Let's get it going. But... Without further ado, let's go. All right, obviously the first thing you want to do is grab all four of your miniatures, and you're going to want to scrape off those nasty mold lines. Now, I didn't find that many mold lines on here, but maybe you did. I don't know. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is prime it in black. I'm using an airbrush, but if you do not have an airbrush, just use spray paint. And we're hitting it all with Chaos Black or Vallejo Black, whatever you have that's similar. Once you're done with the black and it's completely dry, we want to use a Mechanicus Standard Gray spray paint or in your airbrush if you have gray primer. And we're hitting that at about a 45 degree angle, maybe a little bit more horizontal than compared to other miniatures. And once that is completely dry, we're going to want to hit it from directly above, maybe at a 45 degree angle to get that Corax white in there. And that's going to be our nice base tone for our miniature that we're going to use to paint over a little bit. So it's just going to expedite the process just a little bit. Just make sure we're getting those nice white colors on the face because we're going to dull it down here in a later step and on the shoulders where the sun's going to hit it the most. Now to start our base colors, we're gonna be using a little dryad bark for the hat. Thought that was kind of weird that this thing looks nasty and has this nice little hat on top of its head, whatever. Probably the most tedious portion of this miniature is painting the skin and we're gonna be using Bugman's Glow for our base tone. Now you're gonna to have to take your time on this because you have the chest, the abdominals. I painted the hands white because in the card art, you can't see what color the hands are and I said, F it, let's just do it in, uh, in skin color. And then we wanna pick out all the pieces of torn flesh basically that are on the legs. There's several pieces that I ended up picking out and it added it over, added an overall nicer flavor, I think, to the miniature to give it that nice, you know, torn pants versus skin color. I think it looked out, uh, worked out pretty good. So we're just hitting that whole areas and just follow around what I'm doing and take your time because this is gonna take a little while. Now as you're watching this, you probably notice that I have kind of a bigger detail brush. When I'm painting large miniatures, obviously I'm using a larger brush and I'm also trying to expedite the process because one of the worst things that I find in miniature painting is batch painting the same miniature over and over and over and over again. It gets boring, it gets redundant, you then start to try and push things quicker. So I'm trying to make this as quickly as possible so I'm using a larger brush to get that paint on quickly. If you make a mistake and get it on the white, that's not a problem. Just go over with some Corax white to clean it up. For our trousers, our torn trousers, we're going to be using a little Steel Legion Drab. And again, this is a harder process because those pants are covered by the hands in the shaft of the axe. So it's going to take you a little while. I'm again using a larger brush. At one point I was using the giant shade brush from Citadel just to get that paint on as quickly as possible just to get this thing speeded up because this is going to take a while. But it's going to be worth it in the end because these miniatures are going to look fantastic on the table. And all your friends are like, oh my god, you're so cool. Like, oh, these are such great miniatures. And that just adds to the flavor and the text and the overall game. It just makes it so much better. I just 
I love playing with uh, board games with miniatures that are painted. For our silver bits, we're going to use a little Grey Knight Steel. If you don't have this, just use Lead Belcher. It's not a big deal. I just wanted to do something a little differently. So we're going to hit that axe blade, the top and the bottom, and our little pointy portion of our axe. Now, when you're looking at the bell, it's connected by some chain. I messed up, and uh, you're going to see this in the step coming up. I didn't realize that was chain until afterwards, so paint that chain as well with your silver paint and just hit those areas and don't forget that because you're going to see it's going to be a little different in the video but just do that here i decided to add a little uh extra metallic flavor to our miniature so i'm going to be painting a lot of those little i guess connectors or decorative pieces on the shaft of our axe with a little retributor armor then we're going to dumb it down here in a second but i felt like it, it added a little bit of nice contrast color um, to a kind of overall gray dark looking miniature that it's going to turn out to be so i felt like it, it turned out and looked pretty decent so you can do this or if you want to pick out your own things maybe do your own color this is just an idea that i did And just to kind of break up the silver to the gold, we're going to use a Balthazar gold, which is kind of a coppery uh, gold color that Citadel has, which I'm a big fan of. And we're just going to pick out these areas and do them all for miniatures to include painting the bell around the neck of our miniature. Obviously for this step, we're using a smaller size brush to uh, get a little bit more detail in there as we don't want to get a bigger size brush and just slop it everywhere. For the rope piece um, coming around the neck, I'm going to use Talarin Sand again. I painted the metal chain that is holding that bell up in this color. Do not do that. Hit it with that silver portion that you're using and don't make the same mistakes I did because mistakes were made and I'm paying for it. And for the last base color, we're gonna be using a little German gray for the shaft. You don't have to use this if you wanna use this kind of color, but you don't have this. Take a little mechanic of standard gray, add some black to it. It's going to give you that nice dark gray color. Um, if you wanted to use wood, you can use a dryad bark or something comparable if you wanted to do that. I just want to make it dark because there's not a lot of dark pieces on this miniature. It's kind of bright. We're going to dumb it down here in a second, but just kind of want to keep it mundane. We're going to mix our wash now for the white portion. Now we're going to need a lot of this. Um, I end up using, I think, 20, 20 to 25 brushfuls of Lamia medium for um, our capes we're going to be doing because it's going to take a lot because they're such big miniatures. So you want to do two to one ratio of Lamia medium versus Nolan oil. So if you do 20 brushfuls of Lamia medium, you want to do about 10 Maybe maybe eight or nine of of Nolan oil. So just double the amount of Lamy medium, whatever you use for the Nolan oil. 
and we are gonna put it all over the white portion cloak of our miniature and the face. This is gonna take a lot of it, so that's why you need to make a lot of it. Um, but we're just hitting all those areas, and, and the reason why we wanna thin it out is we, if you just use straight nolan oil, it's gonna get too dark. You're not gonna see that white in the on the raised surfaces, and we want it to have a dirty look as we're trying to follow the card art, but we also want it to not be too dirty where it just looks like stained white with black. Also, don't forget to get underneath the hat and just kind of go in areas where you might need a little bit more in the recesses. For all of our skin bits, we're gonna be using Reichland Flesh Shade. If you get some on the other portions that aren't flesh, it is not a big deal at all. It'll just add to the flavor a little bit. And we're gonna hit all those areas. Just be cognizant when you're painting this, you don't wanna slap it all over the place where it's getting onto the white portion of our cloak. We wanna keep that as white as possible or dirty as possible, I guess. For the hat and the bell and the rope and the pants, we're gonna be using a little Agrax Earth Shade to get that in. And again, if you get it on the skin, it's not a big deal. You just wanna avoid getting it onto the white portion of our cloak. And for the metal bits to include the chains around his ankles, you want to hit it with some Nolan oil. We're going to start with the rope and we're going to use a little brailer brown on this rope. We're just picking out the raised areas. If you wanted to make it a little bit lighter off the top, you can add some Ushabdi Bone or Screaming Skull to kind of lighten up that Baylor Brown just a little bit to uh, give it a little bit more contrast. For our steel, we're gonna be using some nice Rune Fang steel. And if you're using it on the chains, you wanna pick out the top raised chains. And when we're doing the ax, we just wanna hit the edges of our ax. And we're gonna use the basically the edge of our brush to do an edge dressing on our ax. Um, when we're doing that, we just wanna be careful. Um, less is more in this instance. We don't wanna go overboard with it because we wanna keep it looking dirty and kinda of nasty. So we're just gonna use the edge of our brush to nicely go over the edge of the ax. And if you wanna use it on the sharpest point of our ax on the bottom, you can kinda of tell there's a concave portion of it to get that Nice contrast from dirty to a silver portion. You can do that. And then we're using it on the chains around his ankles to brighten it up just a little bit. Obviously we're just doing it on the raised areas. And to brighten up our Balthazar gold portions, we're gonna use a little fulgurite copper. And we're just hitting the raised areas once again. We're gonna brighten up that bell around the miniature's neck and on the ax shaft. When you're doing the shaft, you just wanna kinda of pick out little pieces and you don't wanna do the whole thing because you wanna keep that nice Agrax earth shade in the recesses of the paint. 
and just picking out nice little areas that give you a, a brighter versus dark portion for the nice contrast. For the metal bits, we're going to be using a little Liberator Gold um, that we're obviously going to paint over the gold. And again, we're doing the same thing we did with the copper paint, and we're just picking out nice portions of our gold and getting that contrast from the recesses versus the dark versus the light. For the pants, we're going to highlight it with a little steel legion drab. Now we're only going to be picking out the raised portions and the edges of our trousers. And if you wanted to, right off the bat, add just a little bit of U-Shop Bone to brighten it up just a little bit, I would suggest doing that. And we're just going to go around those pants and we're just going to brighten it up as much as we can um, to the edges and the raised areas. Obviously we do not want to get any in the recesses and we're just picking out, taking nice easy steps to brighten up our pants to make them look just a little bit more um, nice, I guess you could say. Again, we're just taking our time and we're just picking out those raised areas of our miniature and we are just going through the motions because this is going to take a little while to get this on. When you're doing the portion of the pants behind the axe shaft, just be very careful. You don't want to get it onto the white and you don't want to get it on the skin. So just take your time, hit those nice little raised areas behind there. If you want to skip this step, that is also an option. I just want to kind of make it a little bit more contrasty. That's probably not a word, but whatever. All right, now we're going to do the flesh. We're going to start with a little Bugman's Glow to the raised areas of our miniature's skin. We just want to pick out nice raised areas on the chest. Obviously we're going to hit those abdominal muscles and we're going to hit the protruding hip bones that are sticking out. We also want to do the hands and obviously the portions that are torn out from the legs of our miniature. And we're just going to pick them out, nice raised areas, and we're going to build up this contrast in a couple stages. Also, don't forget those little toesies, and we're just going to pick out nice portions of the raised areas of our feet. Now we're going to take a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone, and we're going to go over the same areas we just went over with the Bugman's Glow, starting to brighten them up just a little bit. And we're just hitting those raised areas, the portion of our fingers, our fingertips, areas that are just completely raised and you want to keep those dark washes in the recesses as we just want to get that nice buildup of color. And if you're watching this and I'm going a little too fast, just pause it and you can always rewind it and go back and see exactly which portion I painted and how I'm doing it. And I'm using a very fine detail brush, which is a size one. If you wanted to go smaller than this, you could. I'm just obviously trying to speed it up just a little bit.
As our last color of highlight for our flesh, we're going to take one brush full of Kislev Flesh and you're going to mix it into the Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone mixture that you already have. Now we're going to brighten up our skin tone. Now if you can imagine that we did 100% with the original Bugman's Glow, once we washed it and then we re-highlighted it, we did about 75% of the area and then we did about 50% of the area with the last highlight. Now with this highlight, we wanna do about 25%. So we're just going over basically the same areas we just went over, but just a little bit smaller, just to add a little bit more color, a little bit more whiteness to our mixture and really make those tones pop out a little bit. For this stage, we really want to take our time picking out little details here and there just to make it look a little bit nicer and make it look a little bit more extra. If you, after this, wanted to take it just a little bit further, you could just do some pure Kislev Flesh, obviously water down on your wet palette or if you're using a well, um, but I didn't do that. I just decided this was good enough and we're going to move on. And for the last step. Completely optional if you want to do this. I'm going to dry brush some Prexetti white on the surfaces of the utmost portion of our cloak and of the face. This is going to brighten up our white a little bit and when I was staring at the card art I was thinking oh man those look a little bit brighter on the shoulders compared to maybe the face or the bottom so I am going to do this very sparingly. and. Make sure you get all that pigment off of your dry brush. I'm using Ghost Dry Brush that I ordered off Kickstarter, fabulous product. I really enjoy them. And I am just hitting those, those raised areas really quick just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. And I actually like how it turned out. So maybe do one if you like it, then you can do the rest of them. It's up to you. And for our very last step, we're using Abaddon Black to paint our base, which took about three times after it dried to completely cover it. It's a pain in the butt. And that's it. You did it. Look how good those things look. Not too bad. Not a lot of steps. Made it look decent. It's going to look really good on the table. I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And it wasn't crazy, like, doing all these crazy steps. For those of you who have made it to the end of this video and are watching it still, I just want to say thank you for um, watching the video. If you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button so when it comes out, you are alerted and you can watch the video right away. I'm trying to do two videos a week and I'm trying to push them out as quickly as possible. Um, we have Margot's Loft and the Blood Moon Box still left to do, so we're going to keep pushing. All right, get on. <laughs>